Welcome to my channel. Today, I'll be coaching you on how to fill out the application to register permanent residence or adjustment of status, which is Form I-485. This is also a new form that must be used starting on February 24, 2020, together with the Form I-944, which is the Declaration of Self-Sufficiency. This form is going to expire on October 31, 2021. So, let's take a look over here. This part, we are not going to fill out this part because this part is for USCIS use only. Since we are not going to fill out this part, we are going to start from here. But, before I start, I would like to remind you guys to type or print in black ink only. Or, if you are going to use pen to fill out this form, make sure to use black ink pen only. Do not leave the boxes empty. If the boxes is not applicable for you, write an A. And lastly, do not forget to write your A number or alien registration number on the top of every pages of this form. So let's move forward. Note to all applicants. If you do not completely fill out this application or fail to submit required documents listed in the instruction, U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services or USCIS may deny your application. So in this part, you have to fill out this form correctly and completely. And you have to submit the required documents that was listed in the instruction. Failure to fill out this form correctly and completely and failure to submit the required documents may result for the denial of your application. Or you may receive RFE. What is RFE? RFE is Request for Initial Evidence. So let's start in part 1 information about you in this part you are going to write down your current legal name so what is your current legal name your current legal name is your married name so in my part my last name is smith my first name is jane my middle name is cruz other names you have used since birth note provide all other names you have ever used including your family name at birth, other legal names, nicknames, aliases, and assumed names. So in this part, you are going to write down your legal names, aliases, and nicknames, or even assumed names, okay? So in my part, I don't have aliases, I don't have nickname, and I use my single name. So my last name is Cruz, my first name is Chain, my middle name is De La Cruz. If you have used more than one name aside from your single name before, you have to write down that information in this space provided. If you have used more than three names since birth, you have to write down the other information in part 14, additional information. I will show you the part 14 additional information later on. Other information about you. Date of birth, I was born on July 1st, 1987. Note, in addition to providing your actual date of birth, include any other date of birth you have used in connection with any legal names or non-legal names in the space provided in Part 13, Additional Information. So if you have used more than one birth date, you have to write down that information in Part 14, Additional Information. Number six, my gender is female, city or town of birth. I was born in Manila. 
Number eight, country of birth, Philippines. Country of citizenship or nationality, Philippines. Alien registration number. So this is my alien registration number. Note if you have ever used other A numbers, include the additional A numbers in the space provided in part 14 additional information. So if you have used other A numbers or, or if you have more than one A numbers, you have to write down that A numbers in part 14 additional information. USCIS online account number. I don't have an online account number, so I write in A, but if you have a USCIS online account number, you have to write down that information in this space provided. U.S. Social Security Number. So this is my U.S. Social Security Number. If you do not have or if you did not apply a U.S. Social Security Number, do not write down any number in this space provided. U.S. Mailing Address. In care of name. So in this part, I write down my name because where I want the USCIS to send the mail in my name. Okay? This is my street, this is my city of town, Dallas, my state is Texas, and this is my zip code. I'll turn it in or safe mailing address. So in this part, you have to write down your alternate or safe mailing address. If you do not want your, want your permanent U.S. mailing address to receive your mail, and you want other not address to receive your mail, then you have to write down that mailing address in this space provided. But in my part, I want my permanent permanent address to receive my mailing ad my mailing or my mail. Then I write an A in this space provided. Recent immigration history. Provide the information for item number 15 to 19 if you last entered the United States using a passport or travel document. So we have to provide information from 15 to 19. Passport number used at last arrival. So this is my passport number. Travel document number used at last arrival. So in this part, I write in A because I did not use any other travel documents aside from my passport with my visa stamp. Expiration date of this passport or travel document. So this is the expiration date of my passport or travel document. Country that I that issued this passport or travel document. So the country that issued my passport is Philippines. Non-immigrant visa number for this passport. So guys, if you do not know if you, or if you don't know where to find your non-immigrant visa number, you can find your non-immigrant visa number on your visa stamp. Right under your visa stamp expiration, you can find or you can see the, e, the red number that is your non-immigrant visa number. Place of last arrival in the United States. City or town, I arrived in Dallas, state, Texas. Date of last arrival, I arrived on August 16, 2019. When I last arrived in the United States, I. So this part, you are going to pick one of these blocks that is applicable for you. So in my part, I Take 22A because when I arrived here in United States, I was inspected at a port of entry and admitted as four. I was admitted as fiancé visa or K-1 visa. So I write fiancé visa or K-1 visa in this space provided. If you were each, if you were issued a form I-94 arrival departure record number. 23A form I-94 arrival departure record number. So this is my arrival departure record, num record number. But guys, you have to remember when you arrive in your port of entry, the U.S. immigration officer register you for a form I-94 which contain your arrival departure record number. You will not get that right away on your port of entry.
what you have to do is go online and type form i-94 and write down your information but you have to wait one week after your arrival i will make a separate video tutorial on how to get your arrival departure record number okay Expiration of date of authorized stay shown on Form I-94. So in our Form I-94, there will be an expiration date. So you have to write down that information in this space provided. Status on Form I-94. So my status on Form I-94 is fiancé visa. So... And number 24, what is your current immigration status if it has changed since your arrival? So, my current immigration status since my arrival did not change yet. So, it is still a fiancé visa. Provide your name exactly as it appears on your Form I-94. So, this is my name that appears on my Form I-94. The last name is Cruz. My first name is Jane. My middle name is De La Cruz. Part 2. Application type or filing category. Number 1. I am filing this form I-485 as. So you have to select one of these boxes. If you are a principal applicant, then tick the principal applicant. If you are filing this form for your K-2, then you have to tick the derivative applicant. Note, attach a copy of the Form I-797 receipt or approval notice for the underlying petition or application as appropriate. So this part, guys, do not forget to, write, to submit or attach the Form I-797. That is your NOA-1, okay? I am applying as a principal applicant principal or derivative applicant to register local permanent residence or adjust status to that of a local permanent residence based on the following immigrant category. Select only one category. So in this part, you are going to select one of these categories. Family base, employment, pay, employment base, special immigrant, Asylum or refugee, human trafficking victim or victim of qualifying criminal activity, special program based on the certain public laws, additional option. So you have to pick one of these filing categories. So in my part, since I arrived here as K-1 visa or fiancé visa, so my filing category is based on family base. And I will pick to see individual admitted to United States as a fiancé or child of a fiancé of a U.S. citizen form I-129F or K-1 Cato non-immigrant, but if you came here in a different filing category, you have to pick one of these boxes, okay? So we have to skip this part because this part is for working information only. So let's move in here. INA section 245I. Are you applying for adjustment based on the Immigration and Nationality Act? INA Section 245I. So in our part, we are not applying for that um, adjustment based of that INA. So we are going to pick no, okay? Information about your immigrant category. If you are the principal applicant, provide the fo following information. So in this part, this is your receipt number from your NOA-1. We have to remember, guys, when you see the WEC, that will be your receipt number. Your priority date will be the receiving date when the USCIS receives your application. Okay? So in my part, they received my application on November 
If you are a derivative applicant, the, the spouse or unmarried child under 21 years of age of a principal applicant provide the following information for the principal applicant. So in this part, since I am the principal applicant, I write in A. But if you are filing this form for your K-2 or derivative applicant, then you have to write down the principal applicant information in this space provided. Part 3 Additional Information About You Number 1. Have you ever applied for an immigrant visa to obtain permanent resident status at a U.S. Embassy or U.S. Consulate Abroad? So in my part, I did not apply any immigrant visa to obtain permanent resident status, so I think no. But if you applied before, you have to think yes and you have to complete the information of allocation of a U.S. Embassy or U.S. Consulate abroad in this space provided from 22A to 4. Address history. Provide physical address for everywhere you have lived during the last five years, whether inside or outside the United States. Provide your current address first. So in this part, you have to provide your address either inside or outside the United States. But first, you have to provide your current address first. So in this part, this is my current address here in United States. My city or town, Dallas, my zip code, and the country. Date of residence, I started living here on August 16, 2019, and current. Okay, you have to write down or present in this space provided. Physical address too. So this is my address outside the United States. This is my Philippine address. So this is my street number and name. This is my city or town, Makati. This is my zip code. This is my province. And this is my country, Philippines. Date of residence. So I started living here on February 3rd, 2015 to August 15, 2019. Provide your most recent address history, address outside the United States where you live for more than one year, if not already listed above. So since I listed my most recent address outside the United States above, I write in A. But if you did not list it yet, then you have to write down the information in this space provided. Employment history. Provide your employment history for the last five years, whether inside or outside the United States. Provide the most recent employment first. If you need extra space to complete this section, use the space provided in Part 14, Additional Information. So, employer one, name of employer or company. So, this is my company, High Tech. Address of employer or company. So this is my employer or company address. Country Philippines, your occupation. I am a web developer. Date of employment, I was hired on May 15, 2016 and ended up on May 15, 2018. So since I only have one employer since from the last five years, I write in A in this space provided. But if you have more than one employer, you have to write down that em employment history in this space provided. Provide your most recent employment outside of the United States if not listed above. So as I have said, I only have one employment history from the last five years and it was listed above already. So I write in A. Okay, but if you have more, then you have to write down that information in this space provided. Inform part 4, information about your parents. Information about your parent one. So this one is my mother. Her last name is Cruz. Her first name is Anna. Her middle name is De La Cruz. Parent one name at birth. So this is my mother's name at birth before she got married. So her last name is Dila Cruz, her first name is Anna, her middle name is Rivera. 
Tate of birth, she was born on February 13, 1956. Her gender is female. City or town of birth, she was born in Manila. Country of birth, Philippines. Current city or, city or town of residence, if living, she's living in Manila. Current city of residence, if living. Current country of residence, if living, she is living in the Philippines. Information about your parent too. So this is my father information. His last name is Cruz. Her, his first name is Larry. His middle name is Villanueva. So since he has, he have, uh, he has, um, he does, he doesn't have a second name. So I will write an A in this space provided. Date of birth. He was born in February first, nineteen sixty. His gender is male. City or town of birth, he was born in Surigao. Country of birth, he was born in Philippines. Current city or town of residence, if living. So since my dad died already, so I write this is in this space provided, okay? For white in white five. Information about your marital history. What is your current marital status? So, in my current marital status is married. If you are married, is your spouse a current member of the U.S. Armed Forces or U U.S. Coast Guard? So, my husband is not a member of any of this, so I think no. But if your husband is a member of this, then think yes. How many times have you been married, including a non-marriage and marriages? to the same individual so i am married to the same individual and i have been married once only but if you have been divorced or annulled before then you have to write down how many times you have been, you have been married before information about your current marriage including if you are legally separated if you are currently married provide the following information about your current spouse Current spouse legal name, so my husband's last name is Smith, his first name is James, his middle name is Leonard. A number, he does not have an A number because he is a U.S. citizen. Current spouse date of birth, he was born on March 25th, 1979. Date of birth to current spouse, date of marriage to current spouse, we got married on September 21. 2019. Current spouse place of birth. He was born in Houston. Texas is the state. Country is the United States. Place of marriage to current spouse. We got married in Dallas. State is Texas. Country is United States. Is your current spouse is applying with you? I think no because he is a U.S. citizen. Information about prior marriages, if any. If you have been married before, whether in the United States or in other country, provide the following information about your prior spouse. So in this part, you are going to write down your prior spouses if you've been married before or if you have been divorced before. So in my part, since I, I just married once, so I write an A. But if you have been married before, you have to write down your prior spouse information from this space provided to here, okay? If you have, if you have been married once or twice, then write your spouse information from 11A to 13. But if you have been divorced twice or three times, then you have to write down the part 14 additional information. You have to write down the information in this part. Okay? Let's move on in part, part 6. Information about your children. Indicate the total number of all living children, including adult sons and daughters that you have. Note, the term children includes all biological or legally adopted children, as well as the current stepchildren of any age, whether born in the United States or other countries, married or unmarried, living with you or elsewhere, and includes any missing children in those born to you outside of marriage so i only have one because my husband doesn't have a children so 
I write one, but if your husband have a children or if you have a stepchildren if, or if you have a children from previous marriage, then you have to write down the total of the children in this space provided. Provide the following information for each of your children. If you have more than three children, use the space provided in part 14, additional information. So since I only have one, I write down her information in this space provided. So her last name is Paris, her first name is Nicole, her middle name is Truth. Her A number, she does not have an A number because she is my K2 or my derivative applicant. Date of birth, she was born on July 15, 2008. Country of birth, she was born in Philippines. Is this child applying with you? I think yes. But guys, you have to remember, if you write down your stepchildren that is residing here in the United States or a U.S. citizen, you have to think no because they are not applying with you because they are already a U.S. citizen. Okay, so since I only have one, I write an A in this space provided. But if you have more than three children, use the part 14 additional information to write down that children's information. Okay? Part 7, biographic information. Ethnicity, I am not Hispanic or Latino, so I take this box. Race, we are Asian or I am Asian. Part 7, my height is 5 feet and 2 inches. My weight is 119 pounds. Eye color, black. My hair color is black. Part 8, general eligibility and in admissibility grounds. Number 1, have you ever been a member of involved in or in any ways associated with any organization, association, fund, foundation, party, club, society, or similar group in the United States or in any other location in the world, including any military service. So in my part, I am not a member or involved or associated with any organization, so I think no. But if you are a member of any organization, including the military services, then you have to think yes and you have to write down the information of that organization in this space provided. So since I think no, I write in A from organization 1 to organization 3, okay? So in this part, answer item 14 to 80B. So... My answer from 14 to 80B is no. Please read these boxes carefully, okay? Do not just tick the boxes, okay? Read this one carefully. I am not going to read it one by one because these are a long questions to read for me and it will consume so much time if I will read this one by one. So in my case, I answer from 14 to 24 no okay but in 24 if you answer yes then you have to provide that information or take one of these boxes so and in criminal acts in violation so in criminal acts in violation from 25 to 30, I take no because these are not applicable for me. Read this part carefully. Take the boxes that is applicable for you. From 31 to 41, I take no. Okay? Again, read the, back, read the sentences or the paragraph carefully. From 42 to 45, I take no because these are not applicable for me. Again, this is not applicable for me. Check the boxes that is applicable for you. Security and related. So from 46A to 47, I take no. So this is a continuation. 48A to 
51C, I did no. Okay? From 51D to 57, I did no. Okay? From 58A to 60, I take no. Remember, guys, read this part carefully. Do not just check the box without reading it, or else it may cause a problem during the process of your application. So, in public charge, those who are subject to the public charge ground of inadmissibility under INA Section 212A4 must complete Form I-944, Declaration of Self-Sufficiency, and may also have to submit Form I-864, Affidavit of Support, under Section 213A of the INA. So in this part, this is a new form that I have already made a tutorial. Please watch that video so you would understand what is declaration of self-sufficiency also read the instruction of this form so 61 are you exempted for the public charge ground of inadmissibility we are not exempted for the public charge ground of inadmissibility so i think no okay Affidavit of support under Section 213A of INA Form I-864. So in this part, do not click any of these boxes because we are not exempted for affidavit of support. We are not exempted from filing of affidavit of support. So do not take any of these boxes. Leave it blank, okay? From... 62A to 62N. Do not take any of these boxes, okay? If you are, if you came here through K1 visa, do not take any of these boxes. Read this one carefully, okay? Illegal entities and other immigration violation. So again, read carefully. Take the boxes that is only applicable for you. For me, 63A to 69, I think no because this is not applicable for me. Removal, unlawful presence, or illegal re-entry after previous immigration violation. So from 70 to 72B, I think no. Okay? Again, I have to remind you guys carefully. Read this part carefully. Because if you miss one of these boxes, it might cause a problem during the process of your visa application. Okay? So, let's move forward. From 73A to 73B, my answer is no. I think no. Okay? Miscellaneous conduct from 74 to... 80A, I think no. Guys, you have to read this part carefully and tick the boxes that is only applicable for you. And 80B, if you answer to item 80A is yes, what was your nationality or immigration status immediately before you left? So in this part, since I think no, I'm going to write in A in this space provided. Part 9, Accommodation for Individuals with Disability and or Impairments. So in this part, you are asking for accommodation if you are disabled or PWD. Note, read the information in the form I-485 instruction before completing this part. Number one, are you requesting an accommodation because of your disabilities and or impairments? So in my part, since I don't have a disabilities or impairments, I think no. But if you have a disability or impairments and you want to request one of these parts, you have to take one of these boxes that applicable for you. 
but since I think no, I'm going to leave it blank, okay? Part 10, Applicant Statement, Contact Information, Certification, and Signature. So, in this part, this is for the applicant. So, you have to tick one of these boxes also that is applicable for you. So, in my part, I, I am the one who fill out this application. So, I tick 1A. Okay, I can read and understand English and I have read and understand every question and instruction on this application and my answer to every question. So, but if you have an interpreter, you have to tick one of these boxes or if you have a preparer, you have to tick one of these boxes too. Applicants contact information, daytime telephone number. I don't have a daytime telephone number. So I write in A, applicant mobile number. So this is my applicant, my mobile number, and this is my email. So applicant certification. So in this part, you are certifying that all the documents that you have submitted together with this form or all the information that you have written in this form are true and correct. This is not being altered and these are all originals, okay? Then after that, you have to sign this form in this space provided. After you sign, you have to write down the date when you sign this form, okay? Part 11, interpreter contact information, certification, and signature. So in this part, your interpreter is going to fill out this information. If you have an interpreter, then they have to fill out this information. But in my case, my case, I don't have an interpreter, so I write in A. Interpreter mailing address. So as I have said, I don't have an interpreter, so I write in A. But if you have, then you have to write down your interpreter contact information, address, and all the information that this form needed for the interpreter. Interpreter certification. So your interpreter should write down the language that she or he uses to interpret, to interpret this form with you. Your interpreter signature. So in this part, Part 12, contact information, declaration, and signature of the person preparing this application, if other than the applicant. So in this part, this is also for your preparer. So since I am the one who prepare myself my form, then I write in A. But guys, you have to remember, if you are filing out or filling out this form for your K2, and your K2 is a minor, then you are the one who prepared this form. Then you have to write your information in this space provided. But in my case, I'm preparing this for myself, so I am not a preparer because I am the one who prepared for my own form, so I write in A. But if you are preparing this form for someone else, then you have to write down your information in preparer's part, okay? Preparer's um, statement. So you have to tick one of these boxes. If you are an attorney or not an attorney, then you have to tick of these boxes. If you are an if you are not an attorney or accredited representative but have prepared this application on behalf of the applicant, then you have to tick 7A. But if you are an attorney, then you have to tick 7B. Okay? your preparer signature, and the date when the preparer signed this form. So this part, we are not going to fill out this part because this is for the USCIS officer and you will they will fill out this part after your interview. So this is your part 14 additional information. Most of you guys is confused on how to fill out this 
part, okay? So, in this part, you have to write down your last name, your first name, your middle name, and your alien or A number, okay? But unfortunately, my computer, again, is not allowing me to write down here. So, you have to use pen if you cannot write down on your computer, okay? So, in page number, so I'm going to describe on how to write down your page part number and item number. I'm going to go to page number six. This is this part is on your address. Most of you guys has more than one or two addresses that that doesn't fit on the page. Okay, so you have to use this part to write down the other information. So we're going to page number six. Page number six. So in page number six, I write in A because my address, I only have two address to three address in the Philippines. So 9A, if you write down already here, and you have to write down another information in page 14, additional information, you have to write the page number. So page number is page 6, item number. So this is your item number, 9, 2, 10, B. Okay? And this is A part 3. As you can see, in the last part, Page 6, part number 3, item number 9A210B. So, once you have written the page number, part number, and item number, then you have to write down your address in this space provided. Okay? The same as the other part of this form. Okay? Thank you for watching and please subscribe to my channel for more video tutorial. Good luck and God bless with your application.